So we get to see this when we watch TV quite a bit, the impact of light and how people react to it. Sometimes you might find yourself in a scene where someone is running and trying to hide and looking up in the sky and that ominous helicopter up there keeps shining a spotlight down and when the light shines upon them, what do they do? They freak out and run again, right? Why is this so? Because they know that if they are found, there's going to be consequences, right? Whether they're criminal, whatever. I mean, you, you can pick the movie that you've seen that in. It happens quite a bit. Uh, where in those scenarios, light is bad because the person is loving living in the darkness and hiding uh, the life they're living, the things they have done. As the light shines upon them, consequences follow. Um, now, that's a literal image that we can imagine in our mind, uh, but as Jesus comes to us with that, I think we can also understand what that feels like spiritually. Uh, we, we spend all the time we do re- repeatedly uh, acknowledging that we're sinners. That's the generic concept. Okay? We believe that people are sinners. Um, but in the personal uh, reflection, it can be really uncomfortable at times. So when the light pierces through and our behaviors that are not pleasing to God are revealed, the, the hurts we've caused others are revealed, uh, it's uncomfortable. And sometimes our response in that would be to run into the darkness, to hide it. Why is that? Because we perceive, because this is the law working on us, that if the light shines there, that the result will be consequence, right? I will be condemned, I will be judged, I will be punished. That's the feeling. Now, I want to share with you today that similar scenarios uh, play out in the world, but there's an extra step included. Okay, so I came across a story of a hiker um, hiking up a trail that uh, was a a pretty high peak, so once you got to the top, there were some pretty sketchy spots near cliffs and all these things, and that hiker, they were pushing their luck. They knew if they're going to get up and down in an amount of time, everything had to go perfectly, but it didn't. And as they were near to the top, they slipped and fell about 20 feet, but landed on this little ledge over the cliff, broke their leg, and so they're not able really to climb back up, and so they were stuck there on the ledge. And no one's coming, because everybody else thought, there's not enough time, right? But as it turns out, okay, because you check into these things um, and people know you're going up, if you don't come back in time uh, with at least a little bit of a a window of grace, uh, they start going, "Uh uh-oh, they didn't come back, they must be lost, they must be hurt, so we should go find them. So what do you have again up in the sky in these scenarios, usually a helicopter with a spotlight trying to find this person? Now, what's different about it? The person is on that ledge hearing the helicopter, probably wishing they had a flare, okay, but hearing the helicopter, and instead of hiding further in the the darkness, what are they trying to do? Be noticed, right? Like, please come find me. Now, the light is still revealing a little bit of a mistake, right? You got yourself into a situation that wasn't good. Mistakes were made, Um, but with the purpose behind this light, the person wants the light. Why? Because it comes with rescue. It's not just to condemn, although the truth will be revealed. (laughs) You pushed your luck, you went too late, you made a mistake, you got stuck, you didn't have help. But we came for you. We rescued you. And that's the, the story this person gets to share now. So as we look at 
this text, I just want us to pay very close attention to the mission of God so that we can understand the light in its proper place. All right? Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. This was another moment of consequences and yet rescue to come. The sin of the people, snakes were biting them, they were dying. Okay, Moses was to lift up a snake on a pole. And if you would just look at it, and you'd be healed, you'd live, you'd be rescued. Okay, so fast forward, that's foreshadowing to the Son of Man, who's speaking in this moment, will be lifted up, and whoever believes in Him may have eternal life, may have rescue, may have healing. Not just for a moment, but for ever. Why? Verse 16, for God so loved the world. Okay. Verse 17 makes very clear the mission. God did not send His Son into the world to condemn. The light is not shining upon you so that you can be punished, condemned, shamed, and left there. What is it for? Whoever does, uh, it's in order that the world might be saved through him, so that the light shines upon you for rescue. Okay? And we receive that. We love those images and the, and the difference, right? Like, I love the fact that even if I'm alone on a ledge, Jesus is coming for me. Anybody else feel this way? A couple people, okay. Yeah. I love that for me. Um, and I, I pray that I receive that well, that it like, just permeates the depths of my being. There are days whenever I question that too. I'm like, I don't know, God, that's pretty bad. All right? Satan likes to whisper that stuff too. And so for us today, just to, to, to think about that image difference. Do you in your life view the light of Jesus shining upon you as a light that condemns or a light that rescues? Okay. All right, so we say it out loud. This is good. But when you really think in your own private time of reflection, you sit on it. You imagine God standing before you. Like, do you you worry a little? Do you have considerations that He has left you where you are? It may happen. This is why we come back to texts like this to hear a new God's way of functioning so that we're reminded in our time of waver, you know. No. God comes, Jesus comes with a light that is a light of rescue. It does reveal the truth, but it doesn't leave you there, right? Um, You are brought home uh, in a place that the Lord has prepared for you, and you are are restored to good health, right? (laughs) That that, that hiker needed to heal for a little while. Um, You're restored to good health, you're nourished, and now actually, you know what that hiker does? They're a voice <laughs> to others. Uh, twofold, be wise, make good decisions. Second, rescue comes. I mean, they're like evangelists now, right? Sharing the story of how rescue came for them. And this is the next part of this for us to consider. We receive rescue. And God says, now good. You are now the light of of the world. You're a city on a hill, right? Don't, don't cover up the light, but we share it, right? And then we sing. All right, okay, we sing. Okay, but, but here's, the, here's the, the real question then. When we have our flashlight, do we shine light to condemn? Do we point out the flaws in others to, to condemn them, to shame them, and to leave them there? Or do we find ourselves emulating the way of Jesus and shining light for rescue? Shining light for 
unity. Shining light for healing. Shining light for restoration. Shining light for reconciliation. Is that how we use the revealing light of Jesus to others? Now, don't answer too quickly. <laughs> if I am honest, many, 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 many times over, I'm like, I'm shining that light. You know? Don't you see this in you? <laughs> you know, like, oh, it's not good. But sometimes Jesus comes back around and says, hey, Billy, you remember how I used that light for you? You could too. And then watch me heal. Watch me restore. Watch me reconcile. Watch me create a story in people's lives that they won't be able to help but share their story of rescue. Use the light like it's intended. So these are the kind of the two parallel journeys I want us to, are inviting us into, as God invites us into the scripture today, is this rescue operation. There is a mission. It's the motivation. It's the why. Why does Jesus come? Why does he shine light? Why does he want us to be shining light? It's for rescue. The rescue. There's a, a ball that is lost, so I'm going to rescue it. <laughs> and I know that by the power of His Spirit, as, as we ever find ourselves misusing the light, or even running from it because we're afraid of the current condemnation, um, I, I pray that He comes back and He puts Jesus right before you. Lift it up so that you would see anew that Jesus came to save you. And I, I really do believe that as we fix our eyes on Jesus, the outcome of our life follows. Okay. As we receive fully and truthfully His healing, rescue-oriented light, uh, the behaviors of our life will follow. So if you're ever wondering, man, I'm shining the light in a condemning way, how do I fix that? Well, it's not to focus on you're shining the light harder, you know? If I just do it harder, I'll do it better. No, 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 Return to Jesus at that moment. Fix your eyes on Jesus anew um, so that you can see the way he's shining on you. And then we'll be able to share that out the rest of the world. So today, receive anew the promise of Jesus that his, his light is rescue for you. And as you go from this place, when given the opportunity, I pray that you can reveal that powerful truth to others as well. In Jesus' name, amen.